Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to do another implementation video for payment gateways. Another video on payment gateways. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement the um, how to implement Mastercard payment gateway to your website. Mastercard payment gateway have a multiple ways to integrate into their gateway. They have something called hosted checkout, which is basically a uh, a ready-made payment page that you can either redirect to or embed in your website and they also have a hosted session hosted session is more like an iframe that sits on top of your customized payment field it lets you control everything by yourself these are two are fully pci compliant and direct payment which is you just take their apis and then you collect card information directly and so on back to hosted checkout which is the method that we're gonna follow here this is how it works you got an app you talk to your server ask it to request a payment session what would they call a payment session from the payment gateway, then that session ID will be returned to you. The session is basically a container of the payment information. Once you return that to your client side, you can then redirect to the payment page. Now you're at the payment page and then uh, and then you complete your payment and maybe you'll get an OTP challenge for 3DS authentication. In that case, you'll, you'll go to your issuer bank page where the OTP or the challenge will be completed. Then you get back to MPGS, then you'll get back to your website then your website is going to request from the server the result, which then requested from MPGS. MPGS returns a full payment response to your server, and then you display the result using that. Very simple. Let me show you how it's, how it's implemented. Okay, so this is my dummy website. It's a skateboard shop where they sell skateboards and accessories for skateboards. Uh, you can just add a few items, go to your cart, and then the checkout will be here. Now here is where I want to integrate my, my MPGS payment page. This button doesn't do anything. I will place it by the uh, by the payment fields instead. So go ahead and Google MPGS MasterCard, MasterCard Payment Gateway. Then here on the website, you'll find the integration guide. Pick the one for your area. Mine is Middle East and Africa. There you go. Now this is the hosted checkout integration guide, which is the one we want to look at. And here you can see the steps. Um, so the first step, you want to generate a session, but we'll do that later. But I want to see what I can do on the client side. So on the client side, I need to include this. Now if you want to use a um, now if you want to use a JavaScript library import like this in your React project, this is my React project. You got you just got to go here to public index.html. Um, my URL is different. It's test dash gateway. You get a test account from your bank, and my bank has my bank's URL is instead test dash gateway for testing. So check with your bank or your acquiry payment service provider what's your actual credentials, your URL, and so on. I include it here. And how to use it? I'll just go to my React component, and to use it, all I gotta do is just do window, then the library name like this. Let's continue reading the guide. So I need to call this configure function. So let's copy this. I'll remove this and include it in my API request instead. And here I need to display my session. Now this is what gets generated from uh, from the uh, from their API call. But hey, look, first it's telling me checkout is not defined. But if I do this, now it works. I need to generate a session and put it here. And then after I do that, I need to show the payment page. To show the payment page, I got two options, the redirection option or the embedded. I want to use the embedded one. So to use the embedded, just copy this here. And now you need a, you need to add a div. So just add an empty div with the ID embed target and it will detect it automatically and just put the payment uh, page here. Okay, now I need to generate a session and put it here. To do that, let's go to Postman. Now the API request on how to do this is here. And uh, to, to understand how to use this, here, they'll say initiate checkout API reference. You want to go here and read the uh, API reference. So right here, this is the URL. This is the authentication, basic authentication with uh, username and password. My API call, and this is my username and password authenticated using basic auth. And here in the return URL, you should include the uh, the link that you want to redirect to back to after the payment is done. So for me, it's just result. Generate a session, take it, put it here. And this will get triggered as soon as the page loads. So let's see what happens. Save. So things are not loading. Maybe it's because I need a little delay here. So I'm just going to try to add my code here instead and try again. Let's refresh and see what happens. Okay, so that delay did it. Now it's working. So maybe you should need to have a, maybe you need to have a minimum of, in React, you need to have a minimum of one second to give it a chance to load. So in my case, that did it, and now the payment page loads. Cool. Uh, now let's let's try a sample payment. To do that, so go here on the guide on the right side, down here, test and go live. Click on it. 
go to the first set of cards in here just grab this one go back to the payment page enter your name the expiry date for successful uh, simulation is 0139 and the security cost 100 the reason I know this is because it says it here in the guide so pay Submit. You get a nice tone when the payment's done, and then it redirects you back to the to your result page that you specified in the API call. Now let's implement this in API request and see what happens. Okay, so this is my endpoint that I'm going to develop. I've installed my dependencies, and now let's implement this. What we see here in Postman, the same thing we're going to implement here in code. Okay, so I'm going to make a request like this. Copy the same URL over. It'll copy my payload, but I'll change a few things. For example, this over here, I want to also append to it the order ID so that I can redirect back to the result page and I can also get the order ID back in my URL. Uh, and also there are a couple of information here that I want to get from the, uh, from the client side, like this one, for example. So I just do the same thing here, order ID, same thing with the currency. And I'm going to do my authentication headers. I'll just slap it here like this. This is my pat, my username and password encoded to base64. And that's all folks. Okay, so for me, I generate the, uh, for me when I generate the session, what I like to do is that I like to create a new order in my database, but mark it as unpaid, like this. And I'm gonna pass the items that I receive, the card items that I receive from the client side, I'll add it to that database. Same thing with the amount and the currency. I'll make my document IDs to be also the order ID. Um, I will also send back the same response that I got from the MPJS server to the client side so that they can interpret the result and, set and, and get the session ID from the payload. That's it. Now let's test this out. Okay, I have deployed my, uh, I have deployed my endpoint to production and I'm going to test it out now. Let's see what happens. Just slap the URL, send the request. Let's see what we get. There you go. Successful. And I'm getting the results returned successfully. So that's good. Now I can use this in my client side. This function that I call payment request and I'll do this stuff in here. So here I'm going to call Axios. These, these, the, uh, the amount, the currency, the card items, the order ID. Then once that all is said and done, I'll just do, I'll do what I was doing before, which is I, I started the session and embedded my page all happening after one second. So I'll just use this instead of using the stuff that I have in component did mount. So remove all of this stuff. I'll go over here. And just to be safe, I'll set a delay of half a second. Let's add a longer delay here just uh just to be safe. Okay, that did it. Now it's working. Then pay. Sure. This is the emulators for it. Then Payment is done, complete. I get the chime. That sounds nice. Now let's, most importantly, let's take a look at the URL. I'm getting my order ID back in the URL and now I can use this to get the payment result. So let's see how that looks like. So take this order. There's an API request called get order. It's just a get request. If you put your order ID here, you get the full order details. And you know if the order is successful by looking at this parameter called status. Captured means the order was captured. The customer was debited. And we need to implement another endpoint that gets called when, they, when the user redirected back to the website that calls this API and gets the payment response and display to the user. We're gonna do step um, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so this is my MPGS result uh, endpoint. What I wanna do is I wanna append my order ID on the end of the get URL like this, and then I'm gonna get it, and I'm gonna use it to call the MPGS server and get the result. Simple, you just gotta use this. Split the URL by the slash, and then get the last item using pop. That will give you the order ID, or the last thing in the URL. Now you can use it. So, wait, URL that we used here. So order ID goes here. I'm gonna put my headers again. Then after you get it now here, there's a lot of things going on. I'm handling my errors and so let's ignore the catches because you're, this is just us handling the errors. Okay, so this is the document where, where, where this order is stored in my database. Let me show you Let me show you where it is. Okay, this is my order database. It looks like this. Here I can find the status of my orders. For example, this one is unpaid. What this line does is that it gets a reference to the doc, one of the documents in that database. Now what I want to do here after I get the result is I want to update the status of the order with the result. I get that from the API call. So I just use this value, status. And then I return to the user two things. I return to the user status of the order and I also return the items. The user can display that in the receipt. Okay, I deployed my function, my endpoint to, produ to production. Now let's test it. So here, I'll just 
put the URL here, send the request, see what I get. I got the status, captured in the items. It got this from the server, from MPGS server, and I got this from my own server, from my database. Cool, now we can use this in my app. So for this, to make this work, let's go to result. And here, what we wanna do is to do await axios get, put the URL for my endpoint, no body, of course. I wanna add the body of the response to my state. So get result data. Oh, wait, uh, this is static value. So I need to get my order ID from the URL. I need to get it and I need to put it here in the URL. How do I do that? I'll use URL search params. This will give me the order ID, I put it here, like this. I also wanna set the loading status to false because the loading is done. I also wanna display the order ID, I can do that like this. This, I need to change it to cap all caps because that's how it's returned my API. Now let's try this again, see if it works. It's loading, it gets result, successful. Uh, but the order reference is not displayed, so let's fix that. But overall it's good. All the reference, I just need to get that from here instead. Try again. getting the order result. There we go, order confirmed. This is the order reference. This is my items that I bought, nice. So we're pretty much done. Let's do an end-to-end -end test now. So you're 139 and 100, remember. Pay, now the payment is loading. Takes me to the issuer bank page for the authentication. Click submit. Now we go back here. Tells me that the order was, that my order was successful, and then it redirects me back to my result page. Shows me the order reference, shows me um, the items, and it shows me also the order ID in here. This is an end-to-end -end implementation of MPGS Payment Gateway Hosted Checkout method. Uh, I hope this was uh, simple enough. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, very easy to implement. One of the simplest implementation out there. But other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the in the comments. Like the video, subscribe, and uh, hope you enjoyed this. See you next time. Bye.